Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. This is a great group. You all look very awake, so I thank you for that. Um, I do my trim presentations a little bit differently. Yes, we're at a tile show. Yes, we're talking tiles. But it's pretty myopic to just kind of think only in that way in the field of design because the designers and the homeowners who are experiencing these products and using them are thinking them in regards to greater trends. So I'm going to start with um, some bigger trends, some macros that are for design overall tell you a little bit about why those are happening in North America right now from a cultural zeitgeist kind of thing. It sounds like a big deal, but just what's happening uh, where we live. And then break that down into what does it mean for tile? So that when you come away and you go into a showroom or someone asks for something or you're working with a designer, you can really understand the point of view of where they're coming from and why they might be asking for that. So does that sound good? Um, so. There are slides in here that we have to have that this is AIA approved and IDCCE, all of that. But let's talk about Art Deco. Um, Art Deco was a style that started in the 1920s. It's organic and graphic at the same time. It's got luxurious materials from all over the world. There's even some Japanese influence in there. So why is that happening here in North America right now? Um, numbers are good, consumer confidence is up, and designers and, and homeowners and hotels and restaurants are looking for more luxe materials, but they don't want to be over the top. They don't want to be ostentatious. There's still some restraint going on, which I think happens a lot in North America, definitely in the United States. Sometimes we err to the traditional and a little more restrained. We want to be beyond the basics, but artistic touches are starting to gain momentum. It's an offshoot from where we were with the maker movement, but not rustic. Think jewelry and refined. So this is some of what that looks like in other aspects of design. About two years ago, we started seeing Art Deco and fashion on the runway, thinking about how trends start. Um, that dress is by Atro. Then about, we started to see it in furnishings and High Point. Um, we've got collections there from Bernhardt and Michelle Workman for French Heritage, uh, which are gaining prominence right now. You can see the use of metals, of swirls, those graphic elements that I talked about. So what does this mean for tile, right? I want you to look out as you walk the floor for um, semi-precious stones and jeweled colors metallic inlays and mosaics, mirrored glass tiles, black and white, always chic, heavily veined marble and other stones and exotic woods. So here's some examples of this. Now, I have not had a chance to get out of my stand much, but I did walk around a little bit yesterday. So uh, the vein stone on the left is from Crossville. We've got some other mirrored tiles there. Um, I saw a great exhibit of this at Elise Edwards with a highly textural black wall tile where they have a new metallic pencil liner that they're using in between to make a chevron. Really great example of Art Deco. A lot of black and white out there and also some beautiful exotic woods. So these are some of the things that if someone comes into your area and they start talking about deco, keep these items in mind on what you're going to pull out and show them. The next is tribal beat. Um, it's really interesting in a politically correct world that, that North America can be um, how we're talking about inspiration versus appropriation. Um, and these tribal trends and designs are coming from multiple places, whether it's Africa or Native America or Papua New Guinea, um, all kind of interesting things in play. It's because world travel is continuing to increase um, as that consumer confidence goes. Millennials, and you've heard this before, they're talking about experiences. And when they come home and they are buying homes, and especially the older ones and decorating them, they want to bring these experiences back to them. This is not a cookie cutter experience. And they're either buying things on their journey or looking for things to recreate them. The whole boho chic movement that you started to hear about a few years ago, as these people are growing up and buying their homes, it's starting to get more sophisticated. Um, and we're all about inclusion, again, not appropriation. So when we talk about design, 
We're talking about really graphic, bold elements, natural colors like ochre and sienna, black and white, black and tan, a lot of texture that comes from nature. Um, so this gives you kind of an example. Um, so fabric looks, um, in this industry, Cotto and concrete, we've all been talking about concrete for a while now, but I want you to think about it almost as a merger with some of those cottos and terracottas. Again, the black and cream and the geometric patterns. Here's some examples, um, both in glass and in porcelain. Um, I really, really love this example of black and cream because it almost looks like a textile out of the Masamara, um, as does the red. Then you start to see the bold patterns that are being used. And these are things that are not necessarily about tile design from a product, but what you do on installation to create that pattern and how you can take something out of the box and make it unique to be able to appropriate this trend. Um, Cottos and concretes and then highly, highly textural um, wall tile that has the look and feel of plaster or um, fabric or something that's been overlaid and then plastered over. So look out, be on the lookout for that as you walk the show floor. Now, flamboyantly Flemish. Um, this one I love because I love Dutch old master paintings. And as we go through this, I want you to think about beautiful, large still lifes, Rembrandt's Night Watch, um, Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring, if anybody read that book a few years back, um, because all of this um, is coming into play with um, the Moody Deeps trend. How many people were a little surprised when you saw these blacks and dark purples being the color of the year? Um, this is where those deep colors are coming into play from a design trend and what you do with them. So, um, we're kind of in an introspective moment right now. Um, there's a lot of people who are feeling dissatisfied. Some people are feeling a little bit worried, but they're still positive. Um, there's there's um, sign, kind of, I don't want to say concern, but it's a lot of like deep thoughts. Meditation is kind of on trend. People are really getting um, into some soulful elements where they're looking for restful colors and dark colors are really restful. Calms your jangled nerves. Um, and like I said, these things are found in these Dutch old master paintings. So when we look at what that looks like in design, you're seeing these kind of traditional imageries being overscaled, like the painting that's actually wallpaper to the left. A lot of overscaled florals on dark backgrounds. If you type that in like, floral wallpaper and Pinterest right now, you're gonna see a lot of that and embedding, um, as well as upholstery. And then to brighten up these deeps, you're gonna see some beautiful white fabrics like lace, silk, velvet, and lighter colors and blushes. This is how kind of the millennial pink trend is toning back down and being incorporated into something more sophisticated. So what does that look like in tile? We've got inky rich colors, including woods. I love a good brown, but a good ebony wood any day makes me happy. Um, there's some great parquets. I saw a beautiful one at New Ravenna yesterday. Um, again, the old world fabric influences and floral motifs. So when you're looking at some of the glass mosaics out there right now, look for those big overscaled florals. So again, the dark woods, parquets, florals and glass. I love this white image on the bottom. It's actually supposed to be coral, but to me it looks lace-like and can be incorporated in. And then the last one is comfortably content. Um, this is an offshoot next generation of Scandi Modern. I don't know if anybody read about that before, but another way um, to call it is a word that I very rarely pronounce properly. Um, it's hugga with umlauts. Um, and I think I'm supposed to say that more gutturally, but this accent doesn't go there. Um, and, and it's a kind of an interesting point counterpoint to the Art Deco trend that I was talking about. Why are we seeing this? Well, these millennials are, um, as they make their home, they're all about well-being, community, and family. These people are having their first children in their first home. Cozy is a very big deal to them. They're inviting people over, they're having dinner parties, game nights and group cooking are becoming a very big deal to them. 
And it's totally different than when people were cocooning, because people were cocooning 10 years ago, 15 years ago out of fear. And that's not the situation. This is all about having your friends over and group parties and just making everything very cozy and, and at home. And so the handmade, authentic, and organic items are still a big part of that. Kind of, again, an extension of that maker movement, but it's more to the earthy side. So kind of here's what that looks like in design. And you're seeing some elements here that you may also see in that tribal beat. Um, you're seeing that plaster, that very handmade. You're seeing wood that hasn't been, had the insaw, so the raw edges of wood. You're seeing highly textural fabrics, like really cozy accents, oversized table knits and pillows and other accessories. Um, a lot of candlelight. Um, the book in the middle has that word that I never can say right. Um, you're going to see a lot of, in contrast to those dark woods in the Old Master Flemish, you're going to see light and whitewash woods. Really bold wall textures. Um, again, kind of bringing in that cable knit and that fabric. Linen and cotton, that authentic look. We've seen a lot of, lot of, lot of fabric looks in tile. This is kind of where those start to come into play from a usage standpoint. The stones here aren't as formal as the Art Deco, so you're going to see soapstone, you're going to see some concrete poured into that as well, but in countertops and things like that. And the metals, as opposed to bright and shiny, are going to be worn and weathered. So think about steel that's been left out in the rain and that finishes. So um, I think that this bedroom is a great example with the textures on it, and light wash, wash woods, fabrics of linen and cotton, the metal and then the textured in the mat. So that's what um, I see going on in North America right now overall in design. As you walk the show, again, be on the lookout for these things. Don't just think about tile for the sake of tile, but how does that tile fit in with a look or a core um, statement that you might see in Christian's magazines um, and, and how those start to interplay.